So, David, what's it like to have, I mean, you know, after you did the, the Shea Stadium gig and the, the really cool things that happened and the beyond other gigs, and I'm not saying that you would ever or anyone would ever say, oh, this, the other stadium we did a month prior or a week prior, a day prior, uh, you know, wasn't the most important thing we were doing that day. But when you do a gig, that's obviously you have a lot of guests coming. There's a lot of purpose beyond. Uh, and I think Billy was really cool too. You know, this is a confident guy that allows all these other artists to come out and shine. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, Steve Tyler's doing his hit in mm -hmm. your, uh, one of his hits, and you're like. Uh, I was like, I was like, wow, Tommy's playing those parts pretty good, mm -hmm. and, and uh, you have great uh, drummer, and and uh, it's like anything you guys got thrown uh, sounded pretty much just like what these artists would be used to. You, you know, sometimes when artists come visit and they sit in with a band, the band doesn't band really, lost, no matter yeah. how big they yeah. are. Well, we all did our homework on those. We knew who was coming at, at least, you know, yeah. a few uh, days before and but, who, and what song we were going to do. And, and, and how was, comforting yeah. for that, for the artist to know, man, yeah. I'm going to go in there and these guys are going to have it down. Well, they don't really know that. I mean, right. We know it, but they don't <laughs> until they get there. It, but then they yeah. come up they, and they each one of them did a sound check with them and, and they each so went, They got oh, a good feel. Okay, I'm yeah. cool. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, <laughs> that's so every, cool. every one of them was, was happy and it's... So, so uh, after the fact, though, you're working on arrangement for uh, uh, probably video and posting. Did you do any of that? Did we? Well, I worked on some of the uh, the audio sweetening for it, little? yeah, and, uh, and and helping out in that department. All right, and then before uh, the uh, Shea uh, Stadium uh, documentary. Uh, you did all the arrangement for a portion of that, uh, right? I, I, about the stadium and the team, and right. Well, no, I well part of the uh, last play Shea documentary. I, yeah. I I did the part of the film score for that. And, and there was a purpose in that, right? Yeah. Could you explain that? Well, sure. Well, the 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 idea. Um, it was decided that we we're going to use the bulk of the underscoring for the whole film was going to be us playing live to sort of tie it into the whole thing. But there's this one segment of the film which is about five minutes long that talks about the history of how Shea Stadium came into existence uh, with Robert Moses and yeah. how the Mets uh, became the Mets and and all you know that kind of that history and and how it parallels with Billy Joel's upbringing and mm -hmm. and that whole thing. And it's sort of like a little history lesson part of its. Um, animated. It's fascinating. And, actually. Yeah, it's, it's a real, real yeah. good little, yeah. little bit. So I, I scored that, and um, and I wrote uh, original music for that. But I incorporated a bunch of Billy's themes into it, which was an interesting challenge because I wanted to use some of the some of his themes. It's what the director wanted mm -hmm. as well. But I found very quickly that some of his <laughs> themes are so famous and so instantly recognizable yeah. that if you did them too blatantly, it would pull your attention away you, from the narrator, yeah. which is the prime focus. I, my, yeah. my job is to create underscoring. It's not featured, the music. Um, <clears throat> so I found ways to sort of disguise some of it, and I would use the melodies, and they, I would do them with a little bit different rhythm, and I would sneak things in and out of my score. So subliminally, on the first <laughs> listen, people will say, oh, you know, that sounds familiar. They might pick up a few of the melodies here or there, or they might not. But on a few listenings, you'll hear, there's, I think there's about six different songs of Billy's that are interspersed through my little five-minute segment that I... Uh, that yeah, that's there. pretty cool, and yeah. it's pretty laid back too. It's like definitely there, and well, it's supportive. It's not that's, taking over yeah, what you're watching, and right. you do have to kind of oh, you know, when you're thinking about that, and it's worth a few views, a few listens, I guess. Sure. I would say, to, yeah. Well, the to interesting thing about doing. about film scoring in general is that you know you need to watch something over and over again until you start to pick up on the, there's a pacing to the way it's moving and the way it's edited, the scenes mm -hmm. and everything, and you use that as a basis to to figure out what tempo you want to create something <laughs> yeah. at, and yeah. you, you build from there.